Well, g'day, Curd Nerds. Today, we're going to be making Port Salut. Well, Port Salut is a washed rind, washed curd cheese, and it uses Brevi bacterium linens to create an orange colored rind over the top and uh, it will smell a bit when aging. Anyway, this is my first try at uh, Pont Salut. It uh, also is known, it has cousins. So um, cousins of Port Salut are things like um, St. Paulin or St. Paulin and uh, ochre, which is another variety of this type of cheese. So sit back and enjoy and learn how to make Port Salut. So the ingredients for this cheese is 10 litres or 10 quarts of cow's milk, uh, one quarter of a teaspoon of Mesophila culture, an eighth of a teaspoon of Brevi bacterium linens, three quarters of a teaspoon of calcium chloride in a quarter of a cup of water, three quarters of a teaspoon of liquid rennet in a quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water and an 18% brine solution. So once you've got your milk in the pot, you can see there I've got a little bit of cream floating on the top. So I'm just going to gently whisk that in. This uh, distributes the cream, any solidish sort of cream back into the milk. So once that's done, bring the temperature of the milk up to 32 degrees Celsius or 90 Fahrenheit. And then turn the heat off. Now that milk will keep its temperature for quite a while. So first thing we're going to add in is the starter culture. So I'm using a the Mad Millie um, mesophilic culture now because each sachet only holds an eighth of a teaspoon i'm using two sachets sprinkle that in now it was a bit stuck on the bottom so i just opened up the sachet there so that's one in and another one So sprinkle the rest over the top there. Okay, so the next thing we add in is the uh, Brevi bacterium linens. Now this is a red um, mold. It's not a mold, it's a bacteria. Uh, and this causes uh, an orange smear all over the cheese. So just taking my spoon out because we'll need that for the next bit. There's the Brevi bacterium linens. So this is uh, an eighth of a teaspoon. Just pouring that over the top. So we're going to let that rehydrate now. lid on. And as I said, we're going to rehydrate that for five minutes. So five minutes later, we're just going to give it a quick stir. So this is about a minute's worth of stirring sped up. So let's check the temperature again. It's crept up a little bit, so I'm going to move it off the uh, the heat um, after I pop the lid on. 
So we're going to allow that to ripen. I don't want to get any, any, any hotter because there's still steam coming out of the, the bottom pan there that I'm using. So we're going to let the cultures do their stuff and ripen and acidify the milk for one hour. So an hour later, I had to pop it back onto the uh, double boiler thing I'm using just to keep it warm. The temperature dro dropped down a little bit. But uh, we're back at uh, 32 degrees Celsius now. There we are. So we're going to add in the calcium chloride. Just stir that before we pour in. Make sure the milk's moving gently. So pour in our calcium chloride. sec <laughs> there we go must have been having some technical difficulties there anyway so I pour in the calcium chloride and give that a stir for about a minute just make sure that's well mixed through now the calcium chloride adds back some more soluble calcium that has been uh, removed, not removed, has been weakened during the um, pasteurization process. So this is pasteurized milk, but it is unhomogenized, so it's cream lined milk. The cream floats to the top, as you saw at the start there. Okay, we're gonna add in the rennet now. So let's pour that while the milk is moving. And we're gonna stir this for no more than one minute or the rennet will start to set you actually start breaking up the proteins. I'm doing a top to bottom stir there. Getting the, uh, the rennet well mixed through the milk. There we go, that's all you need. And then we're going to cover that and allow that to set the milk for 40 minutes when Siri works. <laughs> there she goes. Okay, so 40 minutes, 40 minutes later, we're now going to uncover and we're gonna check for a clean break. So I'm popping my pinky in there and see if the milk splits. It does a little bit sloppy there. We'll just test it with a knife. I could have let this sit for about another five minutes, but it didn't affect the end product. So just check that on life. Nice clean split, lovely. Yep, that's fine. Okay, so we're going to cut the curd now. Once I get my curd cutter. So this just does the horizontal cuts for me. So it's a 1.25 centimetre or quarter, oh, sorry, half inch cubes. So let's just sped that up, makes it a bit faster, but you can see there the doing the um, doing the, the cuts one way and then uh, cut up them the other way there. And then we'll have nice, lovely, cute little cubes of curd. Now the other way to do it if you haven't got a, um, a curd cutter is to cut them at 45 degree angle um, all around and then you'll have the same effect. So we're going to cover that and we're going to let those cubes of curd heal for five minutes. So five minutes later, we're now going to start stirring the cubes of curds very gently to start with. So we're kind of when we put the uh, the spoon in, we're just going to lift, kind of lift the curds very gently to start with. But we're going to stir for five minutes initially. So as you can see, just lifting the curds there to start with. And if there's any really big chunks, just cut them with the edge of the spoon. Anyway, so we do this for five minutes. So you can see they've shrunk a little bit there. There were a few big chunks that I had to cut up. 
So now we're going to um, allow the curds to rest. So we're going to let those rest for 10 minutes. And some more whey will get expelled there. Excuse the blurriness. Okay, now in the meanwhile, we're going to heat up about 6 litres of water to 60 degrees Celsius or 140 Fahrenheit. This is going to be used to wash the curds. And this uh, reduces the overall acidity of the final cheese. So we're going to remove it down to just above the level of the curds. Now a good trick here is to use a sieve that I sanitised earlier and a ladle. And that way you don't get any uh, stray bits of curd when you're draining it out. So I'm just ladling so this first batch and you can just see the curds there now. Okay, you don't want to go much further than that. Okay. So now we're going to um, add water to that, that warm water that we had to replace the removed whey. So we're going back up to the same level. And you can actually see on the pot there, there's a bit of a, a cream line or um, a little bit of fat from the milk from before. So I know exactly where to go up to. So I'm not using the whole six litres. Just back up to the same level, there we go. And the target temperature should be about 33 degrees Celsius um, because the water will warm the curds up a little bit. So that's a uh, 92 Fahrenheit as well. So I found that my temperature of my curds was a little bit on the high side, so once I'd stirred all that through, it went down to about 35, so I had a little bit of cold water um, out of shot, but it did cool down over the this stirring period, this next stirring period. So not too much of a drama if it's a couple of degrees higher than what it should be. Okay, so the temperature was dropping all the time, so not too much to worry about there. Anyway, we're going to stir all these, uh, that we're going to, well, it's actually washing the curd, it's called, and we're going to stir for 10 minutes. So we're actually lowering the acidity of the curds. So do that for 10 minutes. So 10 minutes later, you can see it's shrunk quite considerably. And the, uh, the colour of that water has actually changed to the same colour as whey because we're actually washing um, some more whey out of the curds as well. And again, apologies for the blurriness. I'm having a few technical problems with my camera. Um, so we're going to let that rest for 10 minutes now. They'll sink back down to the bottom again. Don't forget to cover it. Okay, so in the meanwhile, um, heat another 6 litres of water to 45 Celsius this time. That's 113 Fahrenheit. So we're going to drain off the whey again to the level of the curds. Or just above it. Just until you can see them, that's all. Now, you wouldn't be able to use this whey for, say, making ricotta because you've diluted the uh, the proteins in the whey. So it's good for watering the garden, that sort of thing. Anyway, you can just see the curds there now underneath the, uh, underneath the sieve. So replace that uh, whey with water again. And back up to the same level as what the whey was originally. 
was taking too long, so I just poured it in. Nice and easy. Okay, we're going to give that a good stir. And now the target temperature of the the whey should be about 37. So mine was, once again, a little, probably a centigrade higher once it was all stirred through, but that's okay. So that's 98 Fahrenheit. I could have added a little bit of cold water here, but it cooled down pretty quickly anyway, because it wasn't on a double boiler or anything like that. So we're going to wash these curds or stir uh, for another 10 minutes. There we go. So a nice gentle stirring there, and you'll see that the curds will shrink uh, a fair bit during this final wash. There we go. So you can see, should be out there we go, look how small they are. They're about the size of a, a baked bean, or probably a little bit smaller than that actually. So we're going to let this settle again, just so the curds sink down so it's easy to drain the whey off. So do that for 10 minutes. So once again we're going to ladle off the, the whey down to the level of the curds. But we're not washing again this time, we're just getting rid of that way of water it is now just about yellow water so we're trying to get as much whey as we can off just makes it easy to pour into the mold um, in a minute there we go sieve is very useful for not uh, wasting any of the whey. Anyway, so we'll take it out of the sink now where I've got a cheesecloth lined um, cheese mould or basket. And this is I'm using 165 millimetres which is six inches across and it's about I think it's about uh, 17 centimetres tall which is about six and a half inches, maybe a bit more. Okay, so just gently pop that into the basket. Make sure you get it all in there. This is obviously with clean hands. I washed my hands out of shot, sprayed them with vinegar so they don't get any mould or yeast infection into the cheese. Here we go. Okay, so we're just going to put the cheesecloth over and then put the follower on top. Just give that a gentle squeeze in there, a little bit of whey will come out. And then we're going to move it over to the draining part of the sink where I've got my cheese press set up. I'm going to press that at 5 kilograms or 11 pounds for 30 minutes. So this is a, a very light pressing initially just to help the cheese to form into the uh, the right shape that we need. So I'm not doing too many turns on the on the press. So I've got the spring down about a quarter of the way down, so now I had to readjust it because it, the, the curds compress quite easily so you have to keep retightening it probably about every 10 minutes during this uh, initial 30 minutes pressing. And the whey is running off clear so it's a very good sign you're not over pressing 
the cheese in this initial uh, pressing. Had a bit of trouble, the basket was kind of slipping there. But it was compressing all the time. Anyway, I came back a few times out of shot. Anyway, so 30 minutes later, we're going to remove it from the press and the basket and we're going to take it out of the cloth. I'm going to turn it over. Now be very gentle at this stage, it's only just formed. Some bits on the top there. It's a bit too hot, I changed my jumper if you didn't notice. Took that off. <laughs> okay, so pop the cheese back in the basket, fold a bit of cloth over the top, put the follower on top. I'm going to press at 12 kilograms or 26.5 pounds for 12 hours or overnight. So now I finished this at about 6 in the afternoon. So I took it out of the press the next day at about 7. So it was about 13 hours for me. It's no big deal. Now it has compressed down quite a bit. So I'm going to remove the cheese from the press and the basket. Now because this cheese was a little bit bigger than the normal cheeses I had, I opted to uh, make up 4 litres of saturated brine this time. You can see that in the silver pot there, but we'll see that in a second. Before we do that, you can see there's some excess on the top there. Now, because this is going to be a washed rind cheese, uh, we don't want those little bits sitting there. So we're going to cut those off with a sharp knife. Just trim it around the edges. So this is any uh, of the cheese that escaped the follower, basically. Yeah, two fairy taste testers enjoyed these little bits. <laughs> Sampling the cheese quite early without any salt in it. It wasn't quite for me. Anyway, so trim those bits off. And then we're going to pop the cheese into the brine. So this brine is room temperature. And at our house at the, t at the moment, that was about 18 degrees. Now because it was floating quite high, um, you just sprinkle some salt over the top, and you'll see that in a minute for the bit. So we've, um, we're going to brine that for uh, eight hours. So a little bit of salt on top. This is cheese salt, non-iodized salt is all you need there. So a bit of a sprinkle on top. And then at four hour mark, we're just gonna flip that over. Okay, put the lid on it so no beasties get inside. Okay, so um, we can take it out after the eight hours. I'm gonna air dry it for 12 hours only. It still needs to be fairly moist. Um, seeing this is a wash rind. So after the 12 hours, we're going to place it in a ripening box and we're going to mature that at 13 degrees Celsius or 55 Fahrenheit and turning daily for the first week. Okay, so after a week of ripening in your cheese fridge, we're going to make up a bacterial wash using half a cup of boiled cool, cooled boiled water one teaspoon of salt and one sixty-fourth of a teaspoon of Brevibacteria linens, which is, if I remember rightly, a drop on my very tiny little measuring spoons. Anyway, there's a teaspoon of salt in my half a cup of water. And we give that a good stir until that's dissolved. It takes a little bit of time. So this is called a simple brine solution at the moment until we add in the the bacteria, the red mold bacteria. Stirring, stirring, stirring. It takes a long time to dissolve a teaspoon of salt, obviously. Anyway, so once all of the crystals have uh, dissolved, there we go, finally. Okay, we whip out our mini measuring spoons. And we measure out 1 64th of a teaspoon of 
Brevibacterium linens. There we go. Finally got my act together. Now remembering that these cultures um, in between uses are stored in the freezer at uh, minus 18 Celsius. Anyway, so that's enough. It's only a tiny little bit. So give it a stir too until you uh, see most of that dissolved, which it does. Takes a little while. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get some uh, cling wrap or plastic wrap, whatever you want to call it, and we're going to cover that little jug there and we're going to allow the bacteria to develop for 12 hours let them grow breed and multiply excellent so um, now we grab our cheese 12 hours later and you can see it's uh, as I've been flipping it and the like it's got a bit of a bulge on the sides but apparently that's natural <laughs> for this sort of cheese so we're going to wash the cheese all over with a bacterial wash. So I, this is a, um, I'm using a chuck's wipe here that I boiled. So there's nothing um, on it, no um, detergent or anything like that. So this, that was a clean one, fresh out of the packet. Anyway, so we give the cheese a good wipe, inspect it for any fluff or dust or anything like that. Just dunking our cloth into the solution and just give it a good wipe over. Now I noticed there was a little little bit of fluff or dust that was underneath so I gave it a good rub there. So you probably don't have to be as extreme as me here, just a simple wipe over once will be fine. Anyway, so we're going to tip, make sure that's up the, the other way and we pop it back in our ripening box and pop it back in our cheese cave at the uh, 13 degrees Celsius, 55 Fahrenheit. So in two days time we're going to wash it again with the bacterial wash. Um, and that's the last time you actually wash it with the bacterial wash. Anyway, over to Gavin. So an interesting cheese, I reckon. Um, I'm going to wash it one more time with the Brevi Bacterium Linen Solution. Uh, that'll be tomorrow or the next day. Um, and then after that, it'll be washing uh, twice a week. So just with a normal, simple brine solution. So we'll wash the cheese um, and make sure that the, the, the rind develops and you get that uh, bloomy rind. That's not bloomy rind, so the red smear um, all over the cheese. Now, to a bit of a variation, what you can also do, you can also use beer. You can also, to wash the rind after, with a, with a little bit of salt in it, same, same amount of salt. You can also use white wine is another uh, great um, liquid or beverage to, to wash your cheese with. And apple cider is another one. So I've actually got some dark home-brewed beer. Um, so later on, probably after about two, or three weeks, I'm going to start to wash the rind with the beer to get a different sort of colour and a, and a different flavour um, every uh, couple of times a week. We'll see how that goes. So this cheese will take six weeks to ripen, between six weeks for a mild cheese uh, and up to two months for a, uh, a fairly strong cheese, even longer if you want it really smelly. Um, the flavour uh, profile, that it'll be a creamy paste. Anyway, we'll see that in a future video. Uh, so uh, you'll see me doing the, the ripening and all that sort of stuff. Pretty difficult to um, produce videos with this type of cheese um, to do it from start all the way through to finish. So if you want to um, make this cheese at home, we have uh, kits and supplies at littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out some of our other videos uh, for cheese making at home. Thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and we'll see you next time.